Okay. We're in the last section of chapter four. Oh, whack. yeah, last section of chapter four is correct. Section 4.3, it's about the coefficient of determination. It's kind of a fancy name for something easy to compute. The coefficient of determination is the square of the correlation coefficient. So to find it, you just compute r and then find r squares, r squared. It appears, look at it appears, it appears in most regression computer or calculator output. It gives the fraction of the variation of y in y values explained by the regression line. So what you'll see when you compute r squared, r is between minus 1 and 1. So r squared is between 0 and 1. And we interpret those fractions as a percent. So an r squared of 0.9 says that 90% of the variation in the y values is, is explained by the regression line. Now that's a little hard to explain what that means, but we can look at that r squared value as how good a job the line is doing, the, sorry, the data, the line is doing at describing the data. So if you see it, r squared of 0.9, 90% of what's going on, uh, the way the y values are being predicted by the x, 90% of that's predicted by the regression line. So that'd be a good thing to see if you're trying to use the line to model the data. The details are over here, and they're a little bit cumbersome, uh, and there's something fancy that happens, but we'll try it anyway. So. The variation of the y's, you take the, you take the uh, deviations of the y from their mean. So here's a picture of a regression line. Here's a picture of where the average of the y's is and the average of the y values. It turns out the regression line goes through the point y bar, x bar. So I just put it there for fun. And so if we want to uh, find the variation, which is the squares of the distances away from y bar, for each point, here's an example point here, you would take the distance, that point is from the mean. So here's the mean here. You take this distance here to the point. So all those uh, deviations would come off of the y bar, and you just measure these distances to the points. Where y bar is up here. Now I'm going to make an ugly thing. Okay, so here we go. So all those distances to the, here, we have one here. One, two, three. They're all there. All the distances, oh, this one here is not there. Okay, so it's up to the mean like that. So it's a measure of the variability in the y values, uh, but you're, you're taking the distances away from the mean, the deviations from the mean, as it were, and you're squaring them and adding them. So that's what we do when you compute something like standard deviation. So you're not dividing by n minus 1. You're not taking the square root. You're just taking the sum of the squares of the deviations of the values from their mean. That's what variation stands for, the sums of the squares of values from their mean, approximately. Here it's exactly that. So if that's all we were doing, I think we'd be in pretty good shape, but it gets more complicated. You had the variation that's explained by the line. So we do the same calculation, but we use the points on the regression line that are predicted and see how far away they are from the mean. So then we're going to have all these points on the line, which I'm trying to indicate here, that correspond to the data values. But now they're, they've been collapsed down at the line. And then we take the distance that they are away from the mean here. And we square all those and add them. So that's to say, if the data was really on the line, how much variability were, would there be? So that's called the explained variation. So that says if you move the x's along and you look at the y's traveling along the line and you compute the variation from those points, how does it compare to the variation for the points that really aren't on the line that you use to compute the regression line? Should be comparable. Uh, if it's approximately linear, then the two variations should be very close. If it's not linear, it turns out the total variation is bigger. And then here's what's called the unexplained variation. You take the, diff the distance of the y's from their predicted values. So those are the residuals. And then we take the sum of the squares of the residuals. So this is the kind of thing that the regression line is trying to minimize. It's doing the best possible job of, of all lines. That unexplained variation is as small as possible. So you can see why we might want to use the regression line if you believed in variation as a way to measure an unexplained variation of something you want to decrease. That's exactly what that is. And what gets a little bit fancier 
It's a total variation. It's the sum of this explained variation and this unexplained variation. That's sort of a fancy mathematical fact, and it appears throughout statistics where it's sums of squares combine together to give different sums of squares. It's not uh, in the scope of this course to make sense out of that, but it does appear across a lot of uh, statistical procedures. We may have an uh, opportunity to see something like this later on, uh, but it's, it's just a fact that the total variation can usually be broken up into two pieces. One of them is explained kind of by the model, but this, this time is explained by the regression line. The other stuff is left unexplained, and the variations, the sum of the two variations defined carefully can give you the total variation. And if I'm barking like a dog, uh, that's fine. Um, all we really need to do for this class is know that R squared represents something like the percent, the percent linear that the data is. So if you get an R squared of 0.9, the data is 90% aligned and 10% unexplained stuff. Uh, uh, then we go over here, it says that when we're computing R squared, it turns out we're taking the fraction, the explained variation over the total variation. So if the, R squared, if, if the, if the uh, residual squared values is small, which the regression line is trying to do, this plus this equals that. So this will be just about the same as that, and this fraction will get closer and closer to 1. Now what's fancy about that is we compute a correlation without any uh, reference to variation. And now R squared, which is the old correlation coefficient, squared, gives you this fraction. That's surprising, I suppose, on first glance. But if you s studied exactly what we did when we computed R squared and R and R squared, then you can maybe come to terms with the fact that uh, this would be anticipated. Not easily, though. So it's kind of a surprising fact. Then we take the correlation and square it, you get this fraction of the variation that's uh, explained by the line for free. And as usual, when we talk about correlation-based uh, uh, calculations, uh, this R-squared value that you see is not resistant to outliers. So you can get an R-squared close to 1 just from one giant outlier, and the rest of the data is not linear at all. So you have to be careful. R-squared close to 1 with no outlier says the data is close to linear throughout. And that's what you're hoping to see if you have data that's supposed to be linear. When you compute R squared, you should get a number close to 1. And you'll see that uh, even in the calculator output, where when you do regression, it gives you the slope and the intercept, and it gives you R and it gives you R squared. Uh, the purpose for that is R squared is really the better value to look at in terms of how good a job the line is doing at describing the data. R by itself, though, has a purpose because if R is positive, it's a positive association. When R is negative, it's a negative association. And we can see that in the formula for the coefficients in the regression line because the coefficient, the slope is R times S Y over S X. So if R is negative, the slope is negative. If R is positive, the slope is positive. So that's going to get rid of uh, chapter four, and we're going to move on to chapter five and uh, talk to you later.